So glad you could join us here for another edition of the Roadrunners Coaches Corner live from the Tivoli Tap House, where we're live every Monday from 5.30 to 6 p.m., the show where we get you caught up on MSU Denver sports. Feel free to come join us every Monday as we'll be talking MSU Denver athletics. I'm Stephen Priest, and joining me as usual for today's show is my usual co-host from the Met Sports Show. To my right, Brandon Stoll. To my left, Hector Venegas. Joining us from MSU Denver Athletics today, we'll talk with head coach from your volleyball team, Jenny Glenn. Her team is probably playing the best in the nation right now, currently ranked 20th in the AVCA poll. We'll talk to her about how they're getting ready for the upcoming RMAC tournament. We'll also speak with track and field head coach Nick Moss. He's going to tell us about how his team did at the past Re or, excuse me, RMAC tournament. And we will also talk with Rachel Shima Bakuru. I think I got that right. And she'll tell us as well what she's doing to prepare for the upcoming season, or excuse me, the rest of the season. But before we do that, as with all the time at this time, we will look at what happened in this past weekend of Roadrunner Sports. The women's soccer team has now won three games in a row, which included a 7-0 win over UC Colorado Springs and a 2-0 win over Western State Colorado. We had Griselda, better known as Nana Gomez, on the show last week, and she went on to score two goals versus the Mountain Lions last Friday night. There is no one better in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference than our volleyball team. And the proof was in the pudding as Coach Glenn's squad defeated the 22nd ranked Colorado School of Mines at home this past Friday. Michaela Smith shined in the upset, recording 18 kills, 7 service aces, 3 total blocks, and 5 digs. The, run the runners also defeated Colorado Christian 3-1 on Saturday to keep their conference record perfect at 13-0. And finally, the men's soccer team was on the road this past weekend. On Friday, they fell 3-0 to Colorado Mesa in Grand Junction but they rebounded to defeat Westminster College 1-0 in Salt Lake City. Jeff Gillis recorded the lone goal of the game on an assist from Tyler Trujillo. It was Gillis' fourth goal of the year. We now welcome in head coach of your volleyball team, head coach Jenny Glenn. Jenny, thanks so much again for taking out the time to join us. How are you doing tonight? Doing great. How are you? Doing well. You guys have won 14 games in a row now. Just talk about, as a coach, when you're not practicing or leading this team, have you had time to reflect on this yet and just think, wow, what we're doing is pretty special right now? Not too much time. I'm always looking to the next match, <laughs> right. so always scouting the next opponent. But um, every once in a while, we kind of take a breath and, yeah, enjoy it for a moment and then right. realize we still have work ahead. Now, I'm sure you've been asked a million times already what's kind of helped lead you guys to be on this streak thus far, chemistry, good leadership, stuff like that. But when we asked one of the players, they said, you guys are just having fun right now. How much would you say as a coach, fun and, and just being relaxed around each other plays into success like this? Yeah, I think it's important to be comfortable. Um, winning is fun. So right. I think, you know, the fact that we are being successful um, and having that streak alive is, is a lot of fun for our girls. And we try to keep it light sometimes, but mm -hmm. I have pretty high expectations for them. So we are always business-like in the gym, but also getting it done. Right. Now let's look back on this past weekend. First, your squad took on the 22nd ranked Colorado School of Mines. This was a big game for you guys for many reasons. First, how did your team look heading into this game? Uh, and then also, you, you went down after that first set. What was said to kind of rebound and rattle off those three sets for the win? Well, we came off um, a good win at CSU Pueblo mm -hmm. the Saturday before. So I think we are coming in confident to the match. Um, right. It's a rivalry match for us. Our girls were ready to go. Sometimes we, we tend to be a little bit of a slow starting team. Mm -hmm. So we're challenging them with kind of coming out of the gates faster. And I think we just take our time to adjust to our opponent. And so that's why we I think we dropped that first set and made a couple of adjustments and mm -hmm. kind of refocus. And we tend to relax a little bit more in the second set. And we're able to get the next three. Now, what did the win versus a historically stout Mines team mean for, for you guys? Well, it was a great win. You know, I think we're battling them out for some regional rankings, and so it was a great win. A, a well-coached team, a very talented team, so it was, it was a great tactical match that we were able to um, make some good adjustments in. Now, we've had Michaela Smith on, on the show. She's playing at an RMAC Player of the Year type of level this year. Uh, she, continu she continues to put up big numbers but the stat that jumps out is her serving aces. She leads the conference in that category um, and, and had a season high seven of them versus Colorado Mines. Sounds like she worked hard to, to try and, and perfect that portion of her, of her game. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the first things I noticed about Michaela when I got here is how effective and how efficient her serve is. Um, you know, it has great flow, great trajectory on it that makes puts a lot of pressure on a team, which helps our defense out because it makes defense easier when the opponent's out of system. Uh, and, and the following night, you guys took on Colorado Christian and the storyline of the night uh, where the combined 184 digs, uh, both teams' defense was, was set to watch a lot of 
uh, long rallies that, that got the crowd excited. Um, what was what was going through through your mind when you saw that and, and what do you say to your hitters uh, to keep them swinging because I'm sure a little frustration ha has to happen when they're when their good swings are, are being defended yeah well first of all I was happy with our defense I thought we played feisty that's something we've been talking a lot about and you know to match a feisty team defensively is a good step for us um, from an offensive standpoint, we're used to scoring. Our team has a pretty uh, efficient offense. So it was a little frustrating for our hitters, I think, from time to time. But it was a good growth match for us to learn how to move the ball a little bit and not just hit harder in the same line of attack. And so I think we really grew to, to be able to get out of that. And then, Coach, speaking of digs a little bit, uh, Junior Jackie Lopez recorded 28, a career, uh, season high for her. Uh, how, how has she looked wearing the Libero jersey for the first time in their game? Yeah, well, Jackie's had great growth over the course of the year. I think her leadership, um, her communication, and just her confidence in general to be able to kind of be that defensive court captain has really grown tremendously. So I just expect continued growth from her. I'm really excited in the trajectory she's headed. And then, Coach, um, you have a home standing against South Dakota State, uh, South Dakota School of Mines and Black Hills. What do you want to see from your team in those games? Well, just like every week, I want to see them take it one at a time. You know, each team we face is in the way of our goals, and that's what we talk about a lot. So we need to take South Dakota School of Mines on Friday, and we'll scout them, and we'll prepare for them just like we would any other match, and then turn around and do the same thing for a hot Black Hills State team on Saturday. Now, Coach, we know that uh, Brandy Tor and Michaela Smith were awarded, I believe it was RMAC Players of the Week. Talk about this being their senior years. How have they grown since you've been here? What have you tried to teach them? And just talk about their play a little bit this, this season. Yeah, I think their leadership has grown tremendously. You know, as the course of the season goes on, I find myself stepping back and giving them more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that's a sign of a great team. You know, we need the leadership within the huddle when the coaches aren't there. And they're really learning and putting themselves out there in situations right. that are really uncomfortable. And so I feel fortunate to have those two in the locker room and, and saying the right things. They're two competitors that want to win, that are bought into our goals. And so that's where I feel comfortable headed into this final stretch. Now we understand that you're going to the Broncos game tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. um, how are you Busted. feeling about this one? <laughs> and uh, do you think the Broncos can, can bounce back and snap their two game losing streak that oh, they're on right oh, now? It's, it's happening tonight, yeah? for sure. Do you think they're gonna <laughs> really be aggressive tonight with Brock Osweiler, try and get after him? Yeah, I think it's gonna be a little bit of payback. Awesome. Well, Coach, <laughs> thanks so much for taking out the time. It's always a joy to have you on. Have fun at the game tonight, and we wish you the best of luck Thank going you. throughout the season. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. That'll do it for Coach Glenn. We'll take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to talk with Coach Nick Moss about the track and field team, talk about the RMAC championships this past weekend and what he has in store this upcoming weekend. You don't want to miss that. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. To identify situations in which sexual assault may occur. To recognize that non-consensual sex is sexual assault. I pledge. I pledge. To create an environment in which sexual assault is unacceptable and survivors are supported. To intervene in situations where consent has not or cannot be given. Hi, I'm Tyrone Braxton. I won two Super Bowl rings and was an all-pro safety but I wanted to do more with my life. I knew I wanted to help people, and MSU Denver helped me figure out my next steps. As a case manager at the Mental Health Center Denver, I'm helping people re-enter society, and this is so much better than those two Super Bowl rings. I reinvented myself at MSU Denver. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Media. I'm Lexi Marr, senior defender for the Roadrunners women's soccer team. These teams looking for offense, and there's Marr, <laughs> the all-conference defender. And you're watching the Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. I'm Anthony Grant, director of athletics at MSU Denver. 
It's because of your generosity and support that our athletic programs have been able to achieve sustained success and continue to be one of the top athletic departments in the nation. And you're watching the Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner. Remember to keep up with all of your Roadrunner and MSU Denver needs at RoadrunnerAthletics.com. We're live from the Tivoli Tap House where we're at every Monday from 5.30 to 6 p.m. So feel free to come by and enjoy the great food, the beverages, and of course watch the show. Please, last time, and well, excuse me, we're joined now by Coach Nick Moss. Coach, thanks for joining us again. Thanks last time we had you on, uh, you were getting ready for the MSU Denver Invitational. Now we noticed that you had some high schoolers running out there at that meet. Talk about uh, what led that... The, to that process of having the, the runners out there. Right, so uh, a local high school coach came in contact with me um, at the beginning of the summer and said, hey, we really want to showcase our high school athletes at your, you guys' uh, home competition and uh, get on uh, a local course in, in Denver. Um, there aren't a lot of races that happen actually in the city of Denver. A lot of them are sort of branched out in the suburbs, and so right. we were able to work it out and uh, have I think it was 13 of the best high school teams in the, in the state. I think it was every state champion um, from last year in each class. And so it was highly competitive, good opportunity for us to see some of those, the high school talent, and good opportunity for them to see us in competition as well. Now let's talk about your team. First, the men, they actually won the meet. You had four runners in the top 10. Talk about their performance a little bit and what excited you about that. Yeah, that day was fantastic. The guys, uh, the whole expectation was get out and show what we had on our own home course and um, show that we knew it better than anybody else and we could get out there and, uh, and uh, compete against the best. Uh, guys just, yeah, they were, they were rocking and rolling from the beginning. So it was exciting to see them win on our home course in front of the, you know, thousands of people and uh, all the high school kids. You know, really just uh, gives us a little boost uh, in our recruiting efforts uh, for right. the guys to win it. Um, so yeah, it, it was great for us to, to see some progress there and um, yeah, move forward. Now switching gears to the women's side, we know that they finished in third. After talking to you on the last show, we, we understood that you had some, some young talent on the squad. Talk about how impressed you were with their outing and maybe if it built their confidence going forward. Yeah, for that for that uh, competition, it was a pretty good performance for us. I think we were figuring we'd probably get second or third on the women's side. Um, you maybe have an outside shot at winning our home meet. Um, you know, we, we competed well against a couple of regionally ranked teams, mm -hmm. um, some teams that we wouldn't see throughout the year, uh, Dallas Baptist and uh, West Texas A&M are, are pretty strong year after year, so it was good for us to kind of match up against them. And, um, you know, the young girls are still learning, still developing, and it was, a, again, a good chance for them to compete on our home course, sleep in their own beds, and, and really get a good feel for high-level competition. So this past weekend, uh, your team ventured north to Spearfish, uh, South Dakota for the uh, RMAC Championships. We'll start with the women this time. They were battling with four nationally ranked teams in, in the meet. Uh, they would finish 11th overall. Give us your thoughts on, on the women's race. Yeah, uh, we, we had a bit of a struggle um, at the uh, RMAC Championships. Um, I, I, we had a race plan going in it to be a little bit more conservative and, and work ourselves through the race and be ready to, to run some people down ladder stages. And we did um, do decently well in the second half of the race, but it, we had gotten out a little bit too conservative early on and kind of took ourselves out of the race. Um, so we'll, we'll learn from that going forward. Um, on, the, on the women's side, we're, again, still very, very young and, and trying to work ourselves uh, up to that next step, that next level. Now, the men had five ranked teams to deal with, and they finished ninth, uh, led by Brandon Kragu, who finished 28th. How, how did the men do? Kind of the same tale with the guys' side. Uh, we took, took it a little too conservatively going into the race. Um, we could have been a little bit more... Um, fired up and ready to go I think in the early miles uh, again took ourselves out of it uh, late race we were able to, to come back and catch a few people but at that point it was kind of too late um, but you know the guys are, are a little bit more seasoned and when we start rolling into the regional championships here in a few weeks I know that they're gonna be um, amped and ready to go we did we did have a pretty high block of training um, so you know that can describe a little bit of that uh, uh, but you know Kragi he's still firing on all cylinders looking great as the, as the year goes on uh, he was a little bit disappointed in his performance, even though he got 28th overall. Uh, he's expecting to, to break into the top 20 at the regional championships and, and have an all-region performance. And I, I'm, we had a few setbacks, a few guys injured, sickness, that kind of stuff. So when they um, really get healthy, feeling great in the next couple of weeks, we're, we're going to see some special things for sure. And then, Coach, what's next for the cross-country team? Uh, so we host the uh, South Central Regional Championships for NCAA. 
uh, on November 5th uh, at Washington Park. Uh, men's race at 10 o'clock and women at 11.15. Um, and we're going for top five. If we get top five in each of those races, we go to the national championships down in uh, Florida. So gearing up, ready for that. Uh, we've usually had some, some great success at the regionals and uh, sent some, some great teams to the nationals in the last few years, so hopefully we can do it again. And then, Coach, uh, indoor track and field season is the next portion of your season. When does that start for you? So uh, the uh, indoor track season starts in December. Uh, first weekend in December, we actually have a competition, sort of a rust buster, and then things really kick off once we get into January. Track and field people have been practicing pretty hard for, you know, since classes started, essentially. Um, and they're just itching, ready to go. It's hard to put in a lot of work over the course of several months and, and not really see the fruits of your labor. So uh, they're ready and, and chomping at the bit to get going here soon. And coach, with the indoor track season and just that separate side of things, do you have runners on your squad that participate in both? And maybe for those that aren't as educated on cross country and track and field, describe maybe the differences that a runner might face in either or. Yeah, so uh, we do. So any of the people that run cross country will also do indoor and outdoor track. Um, for the distance runners, we don't put as much of an intent focus on the indoor season because it gets to be a really long year when they're doing all three. Um, so we kind of back them off a little bit. But then there, we also have people that compete in the, the shorter sprinting events, um, high jump, long jump, triple jump, things like that. Um, and so there's sort of a difference is there. You get this whole spectrum of, of completely different athletes doing completely different things. Right. Uh, you know, on a football field, it's very explosive. In a basketball court, it's very explosive type. And, and everybody kind of has that same skill set, generally. For us, you know, you've got people that can run six miles and people that can really only sprint for, you know, 10 seconds. And so there's, and everything in between. Um, and so it, it's sort of a nice mixture of the two. And then the difference between indoor and outdoor is, uh, just a bit extreme, right? You don't have the weather elements during an indoor track season and um, that you would during an outdoor. So uh, it's it's a nice sort of mixture for uh, for those that are a fan of a little bit of everything. So if you're interested in track and field, it's it's always good to go to that meet and see you know, who can who can jump the highest out of the group, who can throw the farthest, who can sprint right. the fastest, and um, so yeah. Last question for you, Coach. We're going to be interviewing Rachel uh, Shima Bukuru. Did I get that right? Great. Good All work. right. Awesome. Yep. We're going to talk to her a little bit uh, in a little bit. Tell us about her and, and what you've seen thus far from her this season. Yeah, she's fantastic. So she's a uh, junior college transfer from uh, Hartnell College uh, out in California. Um, she's got a great head on her shoulders. She's, she's a little older, a little more experienced than some of our other girls, and so she's kind of become that, that team mom. Uh, she wouldn't like me saying that, saying <laughs> she's a team mom. She's more the big sister, we'll say that. Mm. Uh, but she's really helped them a lot grow with this young team. Um, she's highly competitive, especially later stages of the race. She's got a, a devastating kick that if she's close to anybody, she can outkick anybody in the, um, in the conference for sure. Um, but yeah, she's, uh, she's been doing some great things cross country. She's, she's pretty good at. Uh, once we get on the track, she's, a, she's an amazing uh, steeplechase runner and miler. Um, so you'll really see her break through when we get into the track season. But yeah, she's been our number two, number three runner and um, highly reliable type person. Great, great person to have on the roster for sure. Well, Coach, as always, thanks for taking out the time Thank to coach. join us. It's always a joy to have you on and pleasure to talk to you. Best of luck at the regional championships this weekend. We'll be rooting for you guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate yeah. it. Of course. Still plenty of uh, cross country and track to come up as next we'll be talking with Rachel Shimabukuru, so you don't want to miss that. This is the Roadrunners Coaches Corner. Robinson stops on a dime, now to Cortez, the Cortez beating, and count the bucket and the foul! If you can't get enough of MSU Denver sports, then you need to tune in to the Roadrunner Review. Get into the game with exclusive highlights, interviews, player stories, and of course the top plays that will have you jumping out of your seat. You can catch all the action on Comcast CET and at RoadrunnersAthletics.com. I'm Joe Rice. I'm the Director of Government Relations for Lockheed Martin Space Systems. I transferred into MSU Denver while I was in the Colorado National Guard and after I completed my associate's degree. This was the only university where somebody actually sat down with me and helped me plan out my academic path to finish my degree and graduate on time. Reach for the stars, come to MSU Denver, launch your career. 
Brought to you by your number one volume Nissan dealer, Titans Nissan. Come in today and choose from nearly 1,200 new Nissans. Get 0% for 72 months with no payments for 90 days. During the bottom line event, lease the new Ultima for only $149 per month. Gives you both efficiency and performance. Looking for an SUV? Then choose the all-wheel drive Rogue at just $159 per month. Also available with optional third row seat. Bottom line savings at Titans Nissan in Aurora and Fort Collins. I'm Michaela Smith, senior outside hitter for the Roadrunner Volleyball Team. All-American. There's Michaela Smith coming up with the solo block. And you're watching the Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. I'm Chris Davis from the Roadrunner Cross Country Team, and you're watching the Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. Thanks for sticking around with us here on the Roadrunners Coaches Corner. We're just about to wrap up. Before we do, we're joined by, all right, don't kill me if I say this wrong, Rachel Shimabukuru. Uh, pretty good, Shimabukuro. Okay. <laughs> See, that's how I was saying it wrong the whole time. All right. No, Rachel, thanks so much for taking out the time to join us. Uh, how you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Not too bad. So we have to ask you about this last name. Where does it come from? What's the heritage behind it? Uh, so my dad's half Okinawan, so it's an okay. Okinawan last name. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm sure you, growing up there was a lot of struggling to pronounce it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's oh, like yeah. When, when the teachers were calling your name and they were they got to Rachel and then they you struggled on that last one. You're like that's just me. I'm just yeah, I'm just right much. here. Yeah. I'm just like just don't don't bother. It's okay. I'm just here. Rachel S. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you grew up in Hollister, California. Tell us what sold you on MSU Denver and Colorado to come out here to the school and the program. Um, so yes, I graduated high school in Hollister. Um, I actually took three years off from college before I came back. I was okay. 21 years old. Um, and I decided to go to a junior college in Salinas, California. It's about 30 minutes from Hollister. Um, and I started doing track and field there. Okay. Um, wasn't in very good shape when I started, but my coach whipped me into shape. Um, my coach from Hartnell Junior College knew Coach Moss and he got us in touch and Coach Moss Apparently liked my my time. Right. And invited me out for a, a visit, and I liked it. I love Denver, and the school was awesome. So I decided to come here. Now, being from California, tell me when did you first realize that this altitude is an actual legitimate thing? How did it affect you? <laughs> um, when I did my first indoor season. So if it wasn't bad enough that everything was indoor and stuffy, the altitude just about killed me. <laughs> uh, probably ran a good minute and a half, two minutes slower in my first 3K. I ran indoors. It was awful. And from then on out, I have been taking iron every single day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a crazy thing, especially if you come from out of state. But then if you go out of state, you're like a superhuman. And People yeah. marvel at your at your strength. Yeah, definitely. Now, on your profile page at RoadrunnersAthletics.com, it says you're majoring in history with a minor in anthropology. What are your plans with that? What do you hope to do with that after college? So I haven't completely decided what I want to do. Okay. I was possibly thinking about teaching, um, but I'm actually looking into going to a, into a master's program for a master's of legal studies. Oh wow! So we'll see where that takes me. Right. I don't know yet. <laughs> Now, how has this season gone for you, and what are some of the highlights of the year for you? Um, so it hasn't gone, you know, as planned. I would have liked to have ran, you know, conference a little bit better. So, um, but I've still got regionals. I'm ready for that, and I'm hoping that's going to be my best race of the season. It's not over yet. So, uh, yeah, that's the goal. Just race my butt off at regionals. <laughs> Um, now, there are a lot of underclassmen on, on this team, it's just you and, and Erica Ruiz uh, as the only upperclassmen, so have you taken on, on that leadership uh, role to help the, the younger girls figure it out? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I have. Um, I'm always just trying to be there for them, and if they have any questions, just try to answer them as best I can, and I feel like I have a lot to offer to them just because... Um, like I said, I took three years off from school, so I mean, I am a lot older than them just in that aspect. And um, just in general, yeah, having more experience than them, I think it's been beneficial to them. Now tell us uh, how Coach Moss has, has helped you uh, in becoming a better runner. Um, Coach Moss is extremely patient. <laughs> so um, I know I can be a little sassy. I know some of the other girls can be a little sassy. And he <laughs> is very patient with it. And I know I get frustrated sometimes when I don't run my best. And instead of, you know, yelling at me, he's like, hey, it's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Like, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get through this workout. You know, you're gonna run <laughs> so much positive, faster. Staying positive, be super positive. So that works for me. <laughs> and then 
you also run indoor track. What mm -hmm. events do you do in indoor track? Um, for indoor, my main event is the mile, but I also do the DMR. I run the 1200 leg on the oh. DMR, so that's probably my favorite. I love it. Super exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and then you are from the California area. Mm -hmm. So do you like Denver better than California? Mm, no, no. Yeah, uh, I, Denver's never... <laughs> great, but oh man, California's got my heart. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now you mentioned during the break that you are a Niners fan, you're a Giants fan. Yeah, all for two. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Raider and, and Dodger, Dodger fan, fan here. here so. So. Talk about the Giants season. It ended probably not the way that most the fans would hope. And then ended. the 49ers kind of in inconsistent a little bit. A little inconsistent, but you know going the way it's going and right. I am more of a Giants fan so I'm a little more upset about that you know I pay a little more attention to that right. um, I'm actually a hockey fan more than anything okay. so I'm a Sharks fan all so right I know we've got the abs here but you know <laughs> Sharks Sharks yeah. hockey Sharks allegiances territory. that's okay to have them. well Rachel thanks so much for joining us yeah, on the absolutely. show we wish you the best of luck to you and the team going forward yeah thank you Appreciate awesome it. So while the cross-country team will be gearing up for regionals in the next couple of weeks let's show you what other teams are doing for this weekend we mentioned the volleyball team will be home this weekend, so come on out to the Auraria Event Center on Friday at 7 p.m. as the Roadrunners take on South Dakota Mines for Parents Night. Then on Saturday, it's Senior Night for four of the athletes as they welcome in Black Hills State into the Mile High City. And, of course, you can watch both games at RoadrunnersAthletics.com or listen in at MyMetMedia.com. Men's soccer is also home this weekend as they wrap up the regular season. First, they'll take on the Grizzlies from Adams State at Friday at 5 p.m. All faculty and staff get in absolutely free, so be sure to check that out. Then on Sunday, it's a big match against Fort Lewis College. Coach Tittle and his squad are looking for a little revenge as the Skyhawks knocked the Roadrunners out of the RMAC tournament last season. So come out on Sunday at 11 a.m. before the Broncos game to cheer on your Roadrunners. And finally, the women's soccer team has one game left on their schedule as they hit the short road to Regis University. That game will start at 1.30 p.m. and Coach Pete and her squad are looking for the win to hopefully host a first round game in the RMAC tournament. The fall teams are either in the playoffs or gearing up for the postseason, so make sure you keep up with all of your sports, Roadrunner sports need at RoadrunnersAthletics.com. For Coach Glenn, Coach Moss, and for Rachel, I'm not going to even try that, the last name anymore, <laughs> and Hector Venegas, Brandon Stoll, Eric Lansing running camera. I'm Stephen Priest. We'll see you next time on the Roadrunners Coaches Corner. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. To identify situations in which sexual assault may occur. To recognize that non-consensual sex is sexual assault. I pledge. I pledge. To create an environment in which sexual assault is unacceptable and survivors are supported. To intervene in situations where consent has not or cannot be given. Hi, I'm Tyrone Braxton. I won two Super Bowl rings and was an all-pro safety. But I wanted to do more with my life. I knew I wanted to help people. And MSU Denver helped me figure out my next steps. As a case manager at the Mental Health Center Denver, I'm helping people re-enter society. And this is so much better than those two Super Bowl rigs. I reinvented myself at MSU Denver. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game. Radio on mymetmedia.com.